Paul in the book of Galatians was dealing with people that wanted to bring in the law of Moses with the saving gospel of Christ. There was teaching going on at that particular time that people need to need Christ all right, but they need to be circumcised according to the law of Moses. Keep some of those traditions, especially circumcision, in order to be saved. And Paul was standing against that. That was perverting the gospel. It wasn't good news. It was perverting the gospel. And we see that in the book of Galatians. He was marveling that they had so quickly removed themselves from God. Because you do that when you remove yourself from his word. You remove yourself from God. To another gospel. And his only his point was... Is that, did someone bewitch you? So did someone bewitch you? They cast a spell on you because I preach so plainly Christ and him crucified. We see that in Galatians 3 and verse 1. And then we pick up. This only what I learned from you. Received ye the spirit by the works of the law? Or was it by the hearing of faith? You see... Law of Moses, works of law, the hearing of faith, hearing that gospel. You see that being brought out there. Are you so foolish? Having begun in the spirit, are you now perfected in the flesh? Now, most Bibles have the big S there, Holy Spirit. But notice he's contrasting flesh and spirit. Did you begin your life as spiritual and you think circumcision is going to make you more perfect? Going to be perfected in the flesh? I'm saying that that will be an example of why he says, are you so foolish having begun in the spirit that you're now perfected in the flesh? Do you suffer many things vain? Because see, the Jews were persecuting the Christians for what they believed. He said, is it all vain? And especially it would be vain if you're now turning against the gospel of Christ and you suffered those things. Paul's going to be accused of still teaching circumcision. He denies it in the book of Galatians. But here he is saying, it would, if it is vain, what a sad commentary that you suffered all this and it was in vain because you're not going to be saved by the gospel. He therefore that supplieth the spirit and worketh miracles, some translations have in you or among you, but sometimes in you, in you, the various people, doeth it by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith. Now, what I want to focus on in this context is to realize that he says, receive ye the spirit. And my question is, there's not any doubt that every child of God received the spirit. The question is, did you do it by the works of the law? Or did you receive the spirit by the hearing of faith? But you did receive the spirit, didn't you? I'm asking every Christian this evening, did you receive the Spirit when you became a Christian? And those who have grown up and gotten older said, that sounds like we're going to go charismatic, receive the Spirit. Well, I, I, are you going to say, no, you didn't receive the Spirit? Every Christian did. And every Christian does. So I want to investigate that with you. I want to be able to say, what did I receive this or not? Because I may go two different directions. Received ye the Spirit? Yes. I received the miraculous manifestation of the Spirit. A few years ago, it's been a few years. I was in a particular college town institution where the people... I went to one of their devotionals. I wanted to see what was that like these days. And there were people there holding their hands up, singing praise, receiving the Spirit. And I received the miraculous manifestation of the Spirit. Or, does the Bible teach that but since the Spirit has revealed the Scripture... I can receive the blessings that the Spirit has provided in the gospel. And yes, I did receive the Spirit. But it is connected with the gospel message. It's connected with hearing the faith 
preached. And I receive the Spirit. We might say the blessings that the Holy Spirit provides through His written Scripture. Is that the concept? We can go two different ways. But I ask you, whatever way we go, what was that experience like when you received the Spirit? Oh, some would say, received the Spirit, I've received a feeling. I was able to speak in tongues, you know. I was able to have these gifts, and I've, I felt like I really was saved. It's confirming to me that I've been saved because I received the miraculous manifestation of the Spirit. And people say, well, I was baptized, and everybody congratulated me. Really, that's probably one of the most happiest times in my life. That's before I realized Christianity can be hard. As I grew to beyond 12 years of age. But I didn't feel anything miraculous. Is there something wrong with me? So which way you go? He said, well, how did you feel about that? We'd have some on one side. I didn't feel a thing. I'm just glad I'm not going to hell. I've got my sins washed away. I want to be a Christian. And others said, no, it was a miraculous moment. Because I was able to speak in tongues and I just felt the power of the Spirit. Does receiving the Spirit in the Scripture deal with miraculous? Yes, it does. We'll see it in our text again. But does the Spirit also, meaning probably why he said, did you receive the Spirit? It encompasses so many blessings that we receive when we accept the Word. We hear the Gospel preached. And we apply it in our lives. It's time to iron that out. Let's just go to a passage in Galatians, the third chapter, in verse 8, when we say, I receive the blessings of the Spirit. Is that a scriptural concept? And let's just see if we can make this real plain, because I think we understand these two passages. In Galatians 3 and verse 8, And the Scripture, foreseeing that God would justify the Gentiles by faith, preached the gospel beforehand unto Abraham, saying, In thee shall all the nations be blessed. Have you ever heard Scripture preach? It does in this passage. The Scripture, he get, the Scripture can see things in the future? Yes. For seeing that God would justify the Gentiles by faith? The Scripture's preached. What did it preach? It preached the gospel beforehand to Abraham. What did he say? He said, in thee shall all the nations be blessed. Scripture was doing that. Scriptures preach and it says articulate things. That is a blessing to all the Gentiles. Could I say, if you receive the Spirit, what the Spirit has produced, Scripture, you will be blessed. Yes, I received that blessing. But would that be fitting? Is that something that we're just wandering away from because we want to stay away from charismatic teaching? No, because I want you to notice as we see in that same chapter, we come to verse 14. He drives it home. That upon the Gentiles might come the blessing of Abraham. What was it? In thee shall all the nations be blessed. The blessing of Abraham in Christ Jesus, that we might receive the promise of the Holy Spirit. It was, I'm going to receive the Holy Spirit as a promise. The Holy Spirit made a promise to Abraham that in thee shall all the nations of the earth be blessed one day in the future, foreseeing it. And that came about. So I can receive the Spirit and be blessed by the Spirit when His promise is fulfilled in my life. I'm a Gentile. And I've been saved by the gospel. Scripture read. The Spirit is named, but His works are meant. That's metonymy. And that's what we're seeing in this passage, I believe. That's what we're seeing in this context. So when we think about that, I receive the blessings that the Holy Spirit provides through the gospel, then I think we're on the right track. 
because did you receive it by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? And you know the answer to that. I do, and they did. Paul, well, they, they understood it didn't come from reading the law of Moses. In which the spirit and the gospel is being fulfilled and people are now being saved by the gospel. I received it by the hearing of faith. And so we drop down a little bit later and we'll talk about this in detail. He not only supplies you the spirit, the blessings that come from the spirit, but he also works miracles. But did he do that by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? They knew these miraculous signs was confirming the gospel. They knew that. And they knew that began with a miraculous manifestation of the Spirit in Acts 2. And it was continuing as the apostles could do miracles. And as we'll see in a few moments, brethren could do miracles. So I think we're on the right track when we think about Spirit is named, but his, what he's produced is there, what he's emphasizing. And we receive those blessings through the hearing of faith and not the works of the law. The Spirit had come in and brought in salvation to the gospel message. But we also notice he works miracles among you. Did he do that by the Holy Spirit? God does that. Did he do that by the Holy Spirit? Yes, he does. And sometimes people received the Holy Spirit's miraculous power. That's found throughout the New Testament. But you'll notice that we can divide that into two areas. Why that occurred and what's happening. For example, in Mark 16, 15, and 16, the apostles will go out and preach the gospel to all the world, to all the nations. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. He that disbelieveth shall be condemned. And verse 20 says, when those apostles went out, the Lord was working with them. God's working with them. Confirming the word by the signs that followed. Those are miraculous signs. They signify something more important than they are. They signify this messenger is from God. This is God saying, here, you can, you can have confidence. This man is from me. And the miracles that transcended natural law around us accomplish that. So either... When we talk about the miraculous work of the Spirit, he was either revealing the gospel or confirming it. I don't find a third category. That's all. Either revealing it or confirming it. Well, our text says, he worketh miracles, and let's take what translations in you. He works miracles, not just in your midst. Dear Christian, he works them in you. And we come to look at the New Testament and realize, you know, 1 Corinthians, the 12th chapter. He speaks about the Godhead, that there's one spirit, but there's many diverse gifts. There's one Lord, but many diverse workings or ministrations. There's one God, there's many diverse ministrations or the idea of, of workings of, of God. Workings, ministrations, gifts. All coming from the Godhead, there's one Spirit, one Lord, there's one God, Father. But then he begins to name them. And here was infallible revelation because those gifts were, and they were distinguished among different individuals, was that miraculous gift of wisdom, able to put things together, infallibly so. There was that miraculous gift of knowledge, there was a miraculous gift of teaching, prophecy. That people would be in, inspired to give off another piece of information that would be good for that congregation. And the Holy Spirit, Jesus Christ, the Father, was indeed behind it. It was an infallible revelation. Because 12 apostles could not be everywhere at one time. And they would be the only ones who could bring those gifts to the people. Again, showing the apostolic authority coming from heaven. But they would then be able to have gifts that when it talked about revealing some message from God, they would do that. But there's nine of them. And what we see in 1 Corinthians 12 
is that you could put the other six in the area of confirmation. There would be one of miraculous faith. You would have to believe in order to be able to work a miracle. Raising the dead, healing the sick, healing the lame. It wasn't the lame man at the gate that believed he was going to be healed. Peter believed it. And he had faith. And that miraculous faith would be manifest, manifesting the fact, I can do miracles. It would be confirmation. There would be gifts of healing. There would be the idea of powers being shown, called miracles here. Discerning of spirits. He preached something. He revealed something. I'm able to tell if it's true or not. Infallibly so. I can see he's speaking for a, a, a spirit that is truth or is it error? I just don't know. It sounded pretty good. No, I know it's wrong. Because he had the power to discern the spirits. Tongues could go either way. It could be revealing new praise unto God for the people to learn. Or it could be saying, I'm about to deliver a message and I'm speaking in a language I've never learned before. Confirmation. And then you have someone that would interpret that tongue. And if you didn't have an interpreter there, you'd be quiet. Everything was to be done in order for edification. But there's nine of them. I don't find a third category other than revealing or confirming. Revealing or confirming. Now the question comes, as the writer says, Paul, did all that happen by the works of the flesh, by the works of the law, or through the hearing of faith? They knew it was connected with the gospel preaching, the gospel age. The gospel has been preached, and it was being confirmed, and it was continually to be confirmed and revealed. A little bit here and a little bit there as people would have these miraculous gifts. So no wonder Paul talks about working of miracles in you. I can see in you. Among you, I can see among you. So he provides the blessings, but he's also involved in working miracles. But then right before that, he said, he that supplieth you the Spirit. I receive the Spirit through the hearing of faith he not only worked miracles through the hearing of faith in connection with that gospel message I'm listening to. Now the message is being revealed. Now the message is being confirmed. But he supplies the Spirit. What's that for? It's distinguished from miracles, isn't it? And he supplies that for us. I receive the Spirit. And there's the supply of the Spirit. Let's notice, we're talking about a word that means to supply or furnish us. And other things that are indeed a blessing or helpful to us. We've already named one of them. We receive the promise that the Spirit made. That we'll be justified from our sins. And we'll be justified from our sins by faith in Christ. That's supplied to me salvation. And the confidence of that. That's good. Is there more that we can add to that? We see this in Galatians 3rd chapter 14 to 8. As we've already seen, he's the promise of the Spirit has come that now that has been fulfilled, the promise to Abraham. But you notice in Acts the 2nd chapter, when he said, you have, you know, the idea of beginning, beginning in the Spirit are you perfected in the flesh? There was a beginning of that gospel. In Acts the second chapter. In 38 and 39. Got 38 down. He's told to repent and be baptized. Every one of you. That's what Peter responds. Infallibly so. And that indeed you were to be baptized. Every one of you. Be baptized in the name of Christ for the remission of your sins. And ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Oh, miraculous manifestation? No. <laughs> because see, he says, you receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, which he promised. 
which is a promise to you and your children and to all those who are afar off. Those are your Gentiles. And all he's doing in Acts, the second chapter, is dealing with Jews or proselytes. Gentiles come in, in Acts 10. But he's knowing that would be taken because that's what Abraham was promised. He would bless all the nations. When I am justified from my sins, what happens? I've had my sins removed. I'm now justified before God. Justified by faith. I, re I had obedience of faith to that. I heard it. I heard that promise. The scripture was preaching to Abraham. And now I hear it from Peter. And I'm one of the 3,000 that obeyed that day. It could be that way. So we've got that down. But what does he supply also? What about he supplies teaching? And he does so for true worship. That which would be continuing in churches to this very hour. How does the Holy Spirit help us with that? In Ephesians 5 and verse 18, Paul is saying to the Ephesians, that you be not drunken with wine, but be filled with the Spirit. Well, I, want to re I received him when I began. I want to be filled with him. How do I do that? Colossians 3, 16, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. And when it does that, it will do so in all wisdom, where we're able to teach and admonish one another. Psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs, singing grace with our hearts to the Lord. Being thankful to God for our salvation, all those things with that. It will continue to call upon the name of the Lord. We'll continue to do all things in His name. And follow His authority in how we worship the Holy Spirit continues to supply us with teaching that we can incorporate into our worship. Not only preaching that gospel, but applying it in our songs. Making sure we're praying in the Holy Spirit according to the teachings of the Spirit. What's the will of God in the matter? It affects our true worship. Yeah, we receive the Spirit. Because we receive the blessings that the Holy Spirit gives and we follow his teaching that he has provided. But thirdly, he provides the teaching by which we can, as we walk according to the Spirit, being led by the Spirit, we will produce fruit of the Spirit. That's not miraculous. It happens when we start letting the word of Christ dwell in us, abide in us, and we follow it. Turn to Galatians 5 and verse 16, as Paul, two chapters over from our text tonight. He says, I say, walk by the Spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Verse 18. But if you are led by the Spirit, you're not under the law. Verse 22. But the fruit of the Spirit is love and joy and peace, long-suffering, kindness. There's goodness. Then what translation have? Faithfulness, meekness, self-control. Against such there is no law. He's dealing with the law of Moses. The law of Moses, that, that idea of the works of the law, are hearing of faith. There's no law against this. We have the freedom to manifest this Fruit, singular, nine manifestations of it, nine facets of it, rather. And they that are of Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh. No, we're not perfected in the flesh. We died to the flesh when we began the spirit. With the lust and the passions thereof, if we live by the spirit, yes, the blessings of salvation. I live by the spirit. By the spirit, let us also walk. Let it lead me. How does he do that? How does the Spirit do that? By his word. By the gospel. By what he's revealed to us. What he's provided for. He supplied the Holy Spirit. Not just the miracles that confirmed it. 
but he supplied that Holy Spirit that we can walk by. Now, this will be an easy question, won't it, to answer? If I'm led by the Spirit, I'm not walking according to the law. I crucified the flesh, not exalted to the point you've got to be circumcised in the flesh in order to be saved. I'm not going to be manifesting the works of the flesh in this context. Very definitely. Did God supply the Spirit and how we should walk and produce fruit in our life? Did He do that by the hearing of faith or by the works of the flesh? Are the works of the law. Which was it? I know this one. It will not be by the flesh. Because I'm led by the Spirit. I walk by the Spirit. And I put to death the deeds of the flesh. And I produce the fruit of the Spirit. And I'm not satisfied till I produce all of them. I don't pick and choose. I'll have three or four of those. And I won't. I'll leave the others alone. It's constant work. And you think you've got long suffering. And you've got patience. And the kids do something. You start all over again, don't you? You lose it. And it's a constant battle. But that's what our life is about. Battle. But what blessing. When you receive the spirit. This is the part of the blessings. That's why he didn't limit it to certain things. He said, did you receive the spirit? Did it come by the hearing of faith or by the works of the law? And what we begin to realize. We receive the spirit. And we receive the blessings of the Holy Spirit. We began our life as a Christian in the Spirit, focusing upon the Spirit and not perfected in the flesh. We realize that He works miracles. And He did that in the first century. And that was part of receiving the Spirit among the people at that day, because Paul speaks about that. He also mentions that He supplies to you the Spirit. We've seen the blessings that are, are there. So where are we? Did you receive the Holy Spirit? And so what we do, begin to think, well, did I receive the Holy Spirit? Did I receive the promise made of the Spirit that I would be justified by my faith in Christ Jesus? That was promised concerning all the Gentiles, was promised to the father of the Jews, Abraham, that we see in Galatians 3 and verse 8, in which the Holy Spirit Gives us the gift of the Holy Spirit is the salvation, justification of sins, not a remission of sins. It was a promise made to both Jew and Gentile. Yeah, I got a hold of that. I got a hold of that. I received the Spirit. I received that blessing. That's what we learned tonight from the chapter 3 of Galatians. But not only that did I receive, I was being led now by the Spirit. It is the beginning of my new life. I will not be perfected in the flesh. Yes, we may be dealing with that in, in the time of the first century, people in the churches of Galatia over circumcision. We don't have that battle today, but I have the battle with Satan. You do too? That we want to kill the works of the flesh. And I... Realize I will not be perfected the flesh. I'm going to be led by the Spirit and put to death the deeds of the body, of the flesh. And he's given me that teaching in which I can begin in that, in that regard. Let's have the, the blessings of, that comes with that with worship that we've seen tonight. But what about these miraculous gifts? Apostles weren't the only ones having miraculous gifts. Individual Christians were. So we need to address that. Because I know it came to the hands of the apostles. I'll give you two examples. You can give me some more. But in Acts the 19th chapter, verse 5 through 6, you got Paul coming down to Ephesus. Apollos has been preaching the gospel, but he's been preaching the good news that's coming through Christ, but he's been preaching the baptism of John. And you know what Paul asked when he came down there? Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? No, we did not even so much know where the Holy Spirit was given. 
What's our sermon tonight? Did you receive the Holy Spirit? And they hadn't received the blessings of the Holy Spirit because they're in the wrong baptism. But was miracles connected with that? Yeah. Because when Paul baptizes them into the name of the Lord Jesus, when he heard this, they were when they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And when Paul laid his hands upon them, the Holy Spirit came on them. Could you say from Scripture, I had an individual Christian in the first century following the teachings of the apostles, that they were individual Christians, not apostles, and they received the power of the Holy Spirit. And what did they do? They could speak in tongues and they prophesied. To deny that is to deny Scripture. So yeah, that is exactly what they did. And Paul initiated it. There would be people there that could prophesy infallibly so the truth where Paul could not be the next day or in the next five years. And tongues, to, to speak and praise God in a tongue that they had never studied. That would be confirmation. Those people don't speak that language. And somebody in that language could confirm it. This is what he said. This is what she said. Acts the 8th chapter makes it pretty plain as well. Because here was Simon. He was a magician. And he was, he saw the true signs. He saw the true miracles that were taking place. In verse 14, and when the apostles that were in Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the word of God, they sent them Peter and John. They happened to be two apostles. Peter and John, who when they were come down, prayed for, for them that they might receive the Holy Spirit. That's what my sermon's about. Did you receive the Holy Spirit? They said, not yet. The apostles are coming. I heard they're going to pray if that's going to be the case. Whoops, they're inviting us over because we're going, they're going to lay their hands on us. They just were baptized into the name of the Lord Jesus. And they laid their hands upon them and they received the Holy Spirit. Do you receive the Holy Spirit when you have a miraculous manifestation of the Holy Spirit in your life? Yes. Yes. It's happening when the gospel was being preached. And when Simon saw that through the laying on of the apostles' hands, the Holy Spirit was given, he offered them money. And we know the rest of the story. Notice it was through the laying on the apostles' hands. We don't have apostles today. That's okay with some. I've got miraculous manifestation of the Holy Spirit. I'll lay my hands on you. That's what some are doing. Where did that come from? Well, we, they're dead. And that's how you got to receive it. Or just pray for it. We'll mix the baptism of the Holy Spirit that was always done throughout the laying on of hands. And the laying on of hands that came to the apostles. We'll just put those together and realize there's really not that important distinction between them. There is great importance. Acts 8 comes between Acts 2 and Acts 10. And when they saw the things that are happening in Acts 10, they didn't go to Acts 8. They went all the way back to Acts 2. The miraculous manifestation straight from heaven came upon the apostles as they were ushering in salvation to the Jews. Acts 10 was ushering in salvation to the Gentiles. And that's the only time it happened. You've got a third category that says salvation is open to you now. That's only two. And when that was not being demonstrated, there was a laying on the apostles' hands. They're dead and gone now. And we need to add something else from Scripture. Because in chapter 13 of 1 Corinthians, we've already looked at 1 Corinthians 12, 4 through 11. But those are the miraculous manifestations of the Holy Spirit revealing, confirming. But we come to the 13th chapter. And we read in verse 8 and verse 9, as he speaks about love, he said, Love never faileth, but whether they be 
prophecies, they shall be done away. Whether they be tongues, they're going to cease. Whether they be knowledge, it shall be done away. Aren't those miraculous gifts? Has tongues and languages of men ceased? No. But the idea of miraculous speaking in a tongue that you did not know from birth and not studied, that said it's just going to cease. And he says, knowledge and prophecy. Weren't those two that I mentioned earlier that are mentioned in 1 Corinthians 12 that are miraculous gifts? They shall be done away. When? When will that happen? For we know in part and we prophesy in part. You'd have a little bit there for the people there in Ephesus and so forth when people obey in the gospel and that gospel was not completed yet. But you'll know in part and you'll prophesy in part. But when that which is perfect, that which is complete and brought together, its final form, that which is perfect has come, that which is in part Knowledge, miraculous knowledge, miraculous prophecy shall be done away. Begin to realize we've got the word. I don't have a new message that needs to be confirmed. You don't either. When people say, well, we, we, we still got miraculous. Guess what new message do you have? Because that's what it was. It was confirming the word, these miraculous gifts, or revealing some new message. If we got a new message... We're going beyond what has been once and for all delivered to the saints, the faith. And while we realize receiving the Spirit in the New Testament can very definitely be the miraculous power upon them. I'm talking to people today. We have a completed word. And I ask you, did you receive the Spirit? Yes. I was justified from my sins. When I received the teachings of the Spirit through the gospel message. Check that one off. I received the blessings of the Spirit in that way. Check another one off. I'm being led by the Spirit. I've done that from the beginning. It's producing the fruit of the Spirit in my life. I'm not perfected in the flesh. I'm battling the works of the flesh. I'm walking by the Spirit. Therefore, I can't be under the law of Moses. You can check that one off. All right, is that all you're getting? <laughs> got people out here there got miraculous gifts. This seems kind of dull. No, this, I'm starting the spirit. I'm being perfected in the spirit. But I've got another one to look at. Because the Bible says this in Ephesians 1, in verse 13 and 14. He ties us in with the saving gospel, ties us in with believing that gospel. And the Apostle Paul reminds the Ephesians in this first chapter of God's grace and his mercy, all the glory goes to him. But it says, in whom also having heard the word of the truth of the gospel of your salvation. Yes, the hearing of faith, hearing that promise now fulfilled. I can be a part of that. In whom also having heard the word of the truth of the gospel of salvation, in whom having also believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. It's not, I'm going to receive the Spirit in a miraculous way. No. I was sealed with the Holy Spirit in one way. It's the Holy Spirit that promises something that's still in my future. It was in Abraham's future. future. It was the Old Testament people's future. And but it's not in our future right now. Do we have, what about us? We don't have the laying on the apostles' hands. They're gone. We got a completed word, so these miraculous gifts have gone away. I've got something that is the blessing of the Holy Spirit. He has promised something. And it is the down payment of what's coming next. Read it with me. It is an earnest, a down payment of our inheritance unto the redemption of God's own possession under the praise of his glory. I thought I was already redeemed from my sins. Yes, you are, but you're not redeemed from the grave yet. Romans 8 and verse 23 
There's adoption as God's people. And what we look forward to that we go through the difficulties of this life is the redemption of the body. Redemption of the body from the grave. And what do I have that I can take into my being that says this is the earnest money, I will pay it at the end, that God has promised it is the Holy Spirit that offers promises. It's the Holy Spirit of promise, just like in Galatians 3 and verse 14. It was the Spirit's promise that you receive. And we take that into our heart, and I'll just check that one off, said, I'm now complete, thank you. What miracle do you want me to have that makes me more complete? Did you receive the Spirit? All it was the working of miracles. But what he said, here's the blessings of the Spirit. To just say one of these things would be incomplete. Did you receive the Spirit? I receive His promises. I receive the fulfillment of His promise. And He satisfies my every step along the way. It's a challenge. But it's walkable. I'm not perfect. But the blood of Jesus Christ is provided that when I'm not, I can confess it and repent and pray for forgiveness, just like Simon needed to do when he wanted to buy the miraculous gifts with money, regardless of what our sin is. And we can just keep walking that life, and we begin in the Spirit. We're not going to ever be perfect in the flesh. But yes, I can say I received the Holy Spirit when I was baptized into Christ. Whenever you were, you did. But I want you to be able to articulate that to your friends that are going to be thinking in terms of miraculous gifts and thinking in terms of feelings. This produces a feeling in me that is based upon the foundation of God's promise the Holy Spirit's promise and his guidance while we have the scripture and while the scripture preached saying things as is leading up to the fulfillment of those things through the gospel as he preached it to Abraham. We can get taught every day by reading the scriptures, taking in those promises Strengthening our walk in, with, with him in the, in the way that the Holy Spirit guides us. Putting to death the deeds of the body. And always being thankful. That I receive the Spirit not from the works of any law. I receive the Spirit by the hearing of faith. That night, that morning, that day. When the gospel was preached. And the scriptures were unfolded. To vote for my mind. And I received the Spirit when I received His promises in obedience to the gospel. Where are you tonight? We're here to assist you in your obedience to the gospel message. You can be justified from your sins tonight, just like they did in Acts, the second chapter, and receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. What the Spirit goes unto you is that promise, and unto the Gentiles is that promise. That he'll save all of us by the blood of Christ. And that can be done by being baptized into Christ this very moment. If we can help you do that, we want to encourage you to do so. While you have this opportunity, come as we stand and sing.